When I first came to Summit Ministries, our PR person who was helping to manage the transition said, uh, we, Fox News wants to know if you will come on their, one of their shows. I said, yeah, I don't know. I've never done a show like that before. Well, do you think you can do it? I said, I don't know if I can do it or not. Yeah, I probably can. I guess I can. I've never tried it. I haven't failed at it, so I might be able to do it. <laughs> so, so they said, all right, great. Well, this is going to be a fairly easy show to do because all you have to do is when you're in New York City, just let them know when you're going to be there. The night before, they will send you the topics and you can prepare. That way you have, you know, 18 full hours of preparation before the, before the big show. So I gave them the date I was next going to be in New York City. They said, this is great. That'll work out perfectly. That'll fit into our time frame. So we will have you come and be on this show. And then, sure enough, just as advertised the night before, they sent me the topics. And they were hard topics, like same-sex marriage and things like that. But I had time to prepare a little bit, so I, I went ahead and did that. The next morning, I got on the train. I went into New York City and I met our PR person, Debbie, and her husband, Mike, at Penn Station. And they had come from Philadelphia just to be there since they knew I hadn't had this experience before, just to be there sort of for emotional support. So we, we got there and they all, we all looked at our watches and said, well, we got time to eat some lunch before the show. So we went to a restaurant, we sat down, we started eating, and Debbie, as a good PR person does, is constantly checking her BlackBerry. She's get, she gets about four or 500 email messages a day she has to try to sort through. And all of a sudden, she looked up at me in alarm. She said, do you know who Ellen Ratner is? I said, no. She said, well, don't you ever watch television news? <laughs> no, actually, I don't. I really... I find television to be very irritating. I just really don't like to watch TV at all, so I don't watch the news. I said, I've heard Fox News on the satellite radio before, but I don't think I've ever actually seen it. And so she said, well, Ellen Ratner is a regular on Fox News and all of the other news channels. She has something to say that's very vehement about just about every topic. So I asked her, why are you telling me this? She said, because that's who you're debating in the upcoming show. Well, what is this lady like? She said, how do I describe this? The best description is she's a far left liberal lesbian feminist. <laughs> I said, so for my first time on Fox News, this is who I'm debating. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it is what it is, right? So I just kept on eating my lunch. Then Debbie looked up at me in real alarm. She said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but they just changed the topics. I said, hold on, That's, the whole deal was that I would have the topics the night before so I could prepare. I don't know enough about current events to be able to just step up and say something on everything. She said, well, they changed the topics anyway, so we'll have to figure out how to deal with it, and here are the new, here's the new topic. So she said, uh, she started to tell me about the new topic. I said, Hol hold on a second, what what could possibly have happened that would change the topic? I mean, the New York State Legislature was considering same-sex marriage at that time. It was a very relevant issue. She said, well, sometimes things come into the news cycle that at the moment, and you have to be ready to deal with them and comment on them. So what came into the news cycle so urgently, I asked? She said, well, it's a little bit hard to explain, but there is a member of Congress from the state of New York who is going to resign his office at a press conference in about 30 minutes? I said, why is he going to resign? She said, that's even harder to explain. He's going to resign because he took a picture of himself in his underwear to try to send to a young female admirer who is not his wife. And he accidentally tweeted it, Debbie said, to 7,000 people. <laughs> I said, okay, I completely get it. He's resigning because he's an idiot. <laughs> so I said, okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. She said, yes, that's what you're going to talk about. I said, all right, so what's this guy's name? She looked at me and she could not answer. So she looked at Mike, her husband, and he looked at me and said, Jeff, his name is Anthony Weiner. <laughs> I said, Mike, this is not funny. <laughs> I'm going on television for the first time in, in about an hour, and you're telling me 
that I am going on television. I mean, you're telling me this guy's name is Anthony Weiner. I said, this is, this is a practical joke, right? I mean, you're just kidding me. He said, no, no, that's the guy's actual name. I said, so I'm going on international television in one hour to debate with a far-left liberal lesbian feminist about whether a man who tweeted a picture of himself in his underwear to 7,000 people whose name is Anthony Weiner should resign? And she said, yeah, that's basically it. I said, cultural engagement cannot get any weirder than this. And it's true. There's no television show or radio show I've been on since that time that was as weird as that one. But I told, the, you know, Debbie said, are you really ready for this? I said, of course I'm ready. How did you prepare for it? I said, I watched the argument clinic video on Monty Python. Right? That's exactly what television news is like. And in the middle, in the, in the commercial breaks, people talk about where they're going to go for lunch and all that. And then the, com the cameras come back on and all they're at each other's throats all of a sudden. So it's, it's a really sort of a strange world. But we got into the studio, and several things happened that I thought were unusual. I went to the green room, and I met Ellen Ratner, and she was every bit as feisty as she'd been advertised to be. And <clears throat> so I tried not to talk with her, actually, because she was screaming at another guest who was in there who wasn't even going to be on her segment. They were arguing about something or other. She was really keyed up. So we finally got into the studio. We sat down there. And there were a couple of things. Do you want to see the clip? Because I can show the clip of just a little bit of it to you. But the... Uh, uh, the one thing that's most obvious to me now as I look at this is that I didn't know some things about being in television studios. For example, they put a microphone on you and every utterance is audible, even nonverbal utterances, which is bad for me because I'm a very nonverbal and nonverbal person. When I'm in a conversation, I'll say, oh, yes, mm, mm, mm-hmm, or mm. You know, I used to make all these noises. That comes through really loud in the video. But, so it takes a couple of minutes to get started, but then you will see this is going to turn into quite a heated debate that goes on for about five minutes. I'm here today to again apologize for the personal mistakes I have made and the embarrassment I have caused. I make this apology to my neighbors and my constituents but I make it particularly to my wife, Huma. I had hoped to be able to continue the work that the citizens of my district elected me to do, to fight for the middle class and those struggling to make it. Unfortunately, the distraction that I have created has made that impossible. So today I am announcing my resignation from Congress. And that was Congressman Anthony Weiner announcing his resignation from the office of a congressman of New York after the texting scandal in which, well, you know the details. We won't go into those there. But we're going to talk about that in the panel discussion because I want to introduce the panel right now. Uh, regular here on FoxNews.com Live, a spirit of debate, uh, is Ellen Ratner. Uh, she is the uh, chief talk radio news service. Bureau right? Chief? Mm. Bureau Chief, yeah. Bureau Chief, okay. Mm. And newcomer to uh, FoxNews.com Live is... Um, Jeff Myers, Dr. Jeff Myers is chairman of the board of Summit Ministries. Can you tell us what Summit Ministries is? Yeah, you bet. Well, at summit.org, you can find out more information. But the key is we're helping young adults who are getting ready to go to college learn how to become defenders of their faith, learn how to stand up for what they believe, learn the battle of ideas that they're going to be facing. Because we tell them it's an issue of worldviews, that there are competitive worldviews. Everybody's got some agenda that they're working with. And if you can understand the lay of the land and those ideas, then you can be stronger in what you believe. And ultimately become a more successful leader. You want to have him practice on me sometime? Yeah. Yeah. I well, we should you know, bring you in there. I'd be happy to. I can feel the yeah. bubbling cauldron already in this room. So I just want to like lay down the groundwork here that let's just agree that we're going to disagree on, on many of these issues. Um, Alan, you were saying in the break, basically, you mm. said you think that Anthony Weiner should not have Absolutely not. Why? He has a mental mm. illness. He should get help for it, just like any other illness. If he had a heart attack, uh, and uh, he should not resign. Mm. Really, a mental illness. I want mean, to read you what Dr. Al Mohler, who's the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, what he said uh, in a sort of an open letter to Congressman Weiner. He says, Dear Congressman Weiner, there is no effective treatment for sin, only atonement found only in Jesus Christ. I see you, I see you rolling your eyes. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, and he doesn't go along, he doesn't say in his article, because it's in the blog he has on his, on his website, he doesn't say, he doesn't have a comparison of Judaism and Christianity, but he goes to, he cites a book uh, by Dr. Um, Philip uh, Reif, Reif, 
the triumph of therapeutic, of the therapeutic. Most Americans seem to know about themselves is that something is wrong with something needs to be fixed, but they do not believe that the problem is sin, a uh, problem for which there must be atonement. Um, thin, sin, the sin problem is not a therapeutic problem, it's a theological problem. Oh, mm. please. Okay. Uh, all I have to say on this front is, you know, people used to say that about addictions. Mm -hmm. They used to say that even about schizophrenia. And I think as we begin to learn more and more about sex addiction, we are going to find that it has exactly the same effect on the brain as chemical addiction and other addictions do. And we're just mm -hmm. a little behind the time, but when the MRI and uh, and uh, and PET scans get a little more sophisticated, we're going to find out it's an addiction. Yeah, so, yeah, so here's what we're finding so far. We're, we're finding that that actually... The, the MRIs and the research in that, because that's an area that I work in, is not really. That's too. not really. It's not. Safety. It's not happening right now. I think. I, I think it's perfectly appropriate for Al Mohler to say that Anthony Weiner needs Jesus. Uh, he certainly needs something. I think very first he needs to grow up. I mean, he's a father now. He needs to start paying attention to his family. Father. He needs sexual um, addiction I treatment. I, I, it's not, but his issue is not sexual addiction in my view. He's got the Peter Pan syndrome. He is a narcissist, a little boy who has never grown up. If he is not sexually addicted, I will eat this table. You know, but let, the let, sec let me, sexual let me, addiction let me, would be, but look at what he was doing. He was sending pictures out of him uh, of himself. This That's exhibitionism, not the same thing as it sexual is, addiction. Oh, it, it is certainly, ask Patrick Carnes or any of those guys who do But here's the ultimate issue. Treatment. You Absolutely. said that as a result of this, he should not really be representing Presenting his district, and my no, point I is, he if he oh, we should not resign, right. if, if he's got, if he's a narcissist, if that truly is the case, and, and that's that would be, uh, you okay. know, but if that's truly the case, he's not representing his district. He's all along been representing himself, and so it's now time for him to step back and let somebody else who can actually be there. He for the actually people. did a lot of things for, for people in his district, and as you recall, people. Well, in his I'm district not saying he would do nothing for the people in his district, but when a guy Ellen, takes Ellen, pictures Ellen, of himself in the gym, and that's how he spends his time. You say that this is a sexual addiction that it can be treated. Do you see the same thing for Christopher Lee? Christopher Lee, I mean, took, I mean, off, his took off his the, shirt and had, had the picture and, and had the picture of himself uh, uh, sent to a woman trying to, you know, who's uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, no, 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 he's a, no, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Republican member of Congress oh, oh, oh. from New York. Well, and that was not a that while long ago. ago. Okay, okay, yeah, it's not that long ago. Yeah, okay. Oh, the guy from upstate New York. Sorry. The people who are sexting right now are middle school kids and Anthony Weiner, and that. The most bizarre thing is, back in the control, and they're like, I can't believe how the guy just pulled it out, just like that. But they cut the video off right there. That's still the video you can see on Fox News. It ends right there. The guy in the control room was like, okay, forget it. That's it. <laughs> Debate's over. <laughs> Nothing more interesting to be said on this topic. <clears throat> but it, it underscored to me how difficult cultural engagement really is. That this, this world in which we live has not just tens of ideas or hundreds of ideas or thousands of ideas, but millions of ideas. 